Hello and welcome to Prophecy Files. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. I hope you will call someone right now and tell them Prophecy Files is on. It's an important program that I want to share with you and we're continuing our study in the seven prophetic churches in the book of Revelation. And I have a very special offer for you today that I want you to get a hold of. These are important times that we live in, significant times. I believe we are living in the last days without a doubt and the signs of the imminent return of Jesus Christ are all around us. I wanna share some of the headlines with you today that will help you to see it even more clearly and to prepare yourself as a believer for the days that are ahead. The Bible has made uh, one of the top lists in the world. It is, and from this article, has made the list of books that have been the most challenged in libraries and public schools. This just recently released article uh, lets us know very clearly that uh, there are those that are beginning to now oppose it in the public places, in libraries, at schools, and so forth. This is one indicator that a continuing society is pulling away from the absolute and the truth of God's Word. There is events that are taking place in the United States and will be taking place according to uh, much news that is happening concerning protests that will take place in the streets of America this one has just happened this past week. Hundreds flocked to the United States Capitol to protest the money and politics, and hundreds arrested. This is part of what is being described as the uh, democracy spring, the democratic spring. You might have heard that term used before. Uh, it's identified in other countries, in the United States, uh, or I should say in the Middle East and other countries. Uh, the Arab Spring that took place that toppled governments in Egypt and Tunisia and in Libya and other uh, countries around the world. This Arab Spring, now called the uh, Democracy Spring, and the elements of that and the supporting uh, different organizations that are coming together with funding from George Soros. And in this list, you can go on their own website, uh, there are many church denominations that are behind this. And when you read it at its face value, it seems like it may be calling for uh, uh, certain standards for our federal government and to get back in line uh, with some of the terminologies with a more um, uh, uh, Republican form of government. But the fact is, the agenda behind many of these organizations, moveon.org, Code Pink, and others, is not one that's favorable to the United States. I would encourage you to check that out. You're gonna hear more about that in the days that are ahead, even some that are calling for what's called the days of rage. Check it out online. In 1968, the convention of the Republican convention and uh, even the Democratic convention was up in arms in many places and there was rioting in the streets. These are terms that are being used right now, thrown around to stir up the forces in the United States uh, with rioting in the streets. You can look for more of that to come. From this article, ISIS kills 21 Christians in recapturing a Syrian city. This is gonna be significant to our study that we're gonna to bring to you in just a few moments. But the Islamic State, ISIS, has now killed more than 20 Christians in this particular area and uh, in Syria and driven at least uh, 230 citizens and uh, more that have been kidnapped uh, into ISIS hands and used for sex slaves and multiple other things that are taking place. I wanna bring some more of that to you in just a moment, so pay close attention. In China, there is a ramping up as China has now torn down more than 2,000 crosses and crucifix uh, in an attempt to eradicate Christianity from China. Thousands of churches now, by the government's order in China, their crosses have been removed from their sanctuaries and from their uh, locations, of, locations of worship. This is an important fact right here as we're seeing the persecution of Christians around the world that is continuing uh, to escalate. Now, I wanna draw your attention into the EU, into the European Union, and into uh, the areas of Greece and Italy as they are continuing to see uh, the immigration ramping up now as the summertime is approaching even more so. George Soros is an individual who is helping to fund all of this and has called for the opening of the borders uh, for these immigrants to come in from uh, Libya and others. It is a fact. 
that as they are coming in, so are terrorists that are coming into the European areas. And if you'll check it out online, you'll find the sexual attacks against women and children in the European states, in Germany especially, uh, is being escalated. Uh, these are things that are not being reported about on your normal network news. According to this article last month, uh, the EU leaders agreed to a $4.7 billion deal with Turkey to try to shut down the immigrant route from the Turkish coast to the Greek islands, which is going to cause Italy uh, serious problems, and Italy itself is next on the horizon to fall in their economic structure, a collapse in Italy's uh, uh, financial uh, government, in their, in their economic structure. The experts are saying from this particular article, they believe the number of people crossing from Libya into Europe could double in just this year as the Balkan areas are closing down uh, their routes for immigrants to be able to be brought in or come in to the European state. Consider this article from Japan, who is now testing and has already tested and implemented in, in several areas, fingerprinting as currency. From this article, there is an envisioned payment system using the, fa the fingerprint of each individual as authenticity instead of using cards or any other uh, particular form of exchange. This article says, starting this summer, the government in Japan will test a system in which foreign tourists will be able to verify their identities and buy things at stores using only their fingerprint. The government hopes to increase the number of foreign tourists by using this system to prevent crime and relieve users from the necessary uh, the necessity of carrying cash or credit cards. It aims and is targeting towards the games, the Olympic games uh, in 2020 in Tokyo to have this system in place. The government plans to substitute fingerprint authenticity for a requirement for their citizens there. This article goes on to say that these attempts have already been put into place by Japan in banking and in theme parks around uh, in, in Japan, in the country of, of Japan. In October of last year, uh, in this particular article, fingerprints were used in more than 30 stores and restaurants as a test to see how it would be embraced, and it has been embraced by the citizens in Japan and these areas being tested, and that's an important fact because if you're a studier of Bible prophecy or read the Bible, the book of Revelation 13, the Bible says that the Antichrist will set up a system whereby every person on this planet will be marked in their right hand or in their forehead, and none will be able to buy or sell. There'll be no exchanges, no opportunities of commerce for anyone who does not possess the mark. Pastor, you think that fingerprints are the mark? I believe it's very clear that we are approaching the time when people will uh, most assuredly open their arms up and embrace whatever the Antichrist mark, the mark of the beast will be, and these won't be adverse. We are already in an area where digital money has overtaken currency and we're seeing the devaluing of the dollar, and as I speak right now, Central banks are uh, meeting with the leadership, the President of the United States, the Federal Reserve Chair, Mrs. Yellen, and others to consider what's taking place in Europe and around the world in economic markets and what will happen in the United States. I will tell you, as I drove here just today to tape this Bible prophecy program and what I'm about to share with you uh, could be very obsolete within just this uh, span between now and the time you're watching this program because things are changing so rapidly in our economic system uh, that one week ago, uh, just the gas station down the street, as I was passing by it this morning, has increased its fuel price for regular fuel uh, almost seven cents now from just last week. What's going on? Is something occurred in the oil markets? I believe that there is great instability and uncertainty in our economy in the United States, and we're sitting on the edge Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, indicators that is coming from every economic indicator and every economic scale that is out there. As I speak, as I've walked into the studio to tape this today, the president today of the United States, President Obama, is declaring almost 400,000 student loans to be forgiven for those who are veterans 
who are disabled. Now, that may not seem like a lot to you uh, that may affect your life, but it certainly will when you consider that second only uh, to the uh, government uh, 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 military and others uh, in that category is student loans across the United States. Trillions of dollars in student loans, and many of them are uh, uh, defaulting on those loans right now. And so today, the decision has been made to be able to forgive almost 400,000. That is over a trillion dollars right there in uh, debt forgiveness. Somebody's got to pay for that. Someone has got to take care of that. We're just going to forgive these loans and uh, it's no big deal. My friends, when we're sitting at $19 trillion indebtedness in the United States, you could see with all the instability around the world and what I'm about to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, we are sitting on the edge of an economic collapse. I believe that could be the reason why that this emergency meetings have been put together since Monday because of what took place even since Sunday. What's taking place? I will tell you in Austria, uh, the article that is bringing this to your understanding that Austria has now this past Sunday on the weekend for the first time in all of European Union history, a European Union nation, Austria, has now taken the opportunity of the new laws passed last year for not a bailout, but a bail-in. Consider this article, The Banking Crisis Explodes in Europe on Sunday afternoon as Austria orders the first ever bank bail-in and takes depositors' money for failed banks. Now listen carefully to this article. I'm going to share it with you quickly. In a move which could trigger a collapse of the European banks in Austria, bail-in, a bail-in, this Failed banks seizing depositors' money to pay bank debts, leaving citizens broke. This could be the actual start of a complete systematic banking collapse in Europe as it panics citizens seeing their fellow depositors wiped out in one fell swoop. Start pulling out their money out of the banks because of it. This is the same occurrence that took place in 29 with the depression coming on right here in the United States. This article goes on to say that Austria officially became the first European country to use the new law under the framework imposed by bank by the bank, the European Recovery and Resolution uh, Directive to share losses of failed banks with senior creditors as it slashed the value of debt owned by this particular bank. So they took this opportunity to do a bail-in, much like what took place in 08 when people's uh, IRAs and their retirement funds vaporized as it disappeared off of the United States banking books. Consider this article continues, the stockholders today found out that they will only see 46 cents on the dollar and will receive that through stock in the failed company. Consider that. Instead of them getting actual cash or money out of the bank, we're going to get this worthless piece of paper as a uh, stock piece of paper in a worthless bank. According to the article, this is how Europe deals with bank failures under laws passed after the Lehman Brothers collapse back in 07 and 08 right here in the United States. Think about this, according to this article. Think about this a moment. All the money you have saved in your retirement accounts, IRAs and 401s, wiped out in one fell swoop. The FDI in, uh, FDIC insurance, no more. This is the new world that we're living in. Now, this is what I want to drive home to you out of this article This is the reason why, and some may call me some pessimistic doomsdayer, but you can check this out for yourself. We cannot sustain what's been taking place, and I've been telling you this on Prophecy Files, but this happened on a Sunday, on the weekend, to avoid any kind of run on the banks, but this is why it's so concerning to me, because this article, and you can read it for yourself in history, uh, it contains this statement, is history repeating itself? I'm going to summarize it for you. But in 1873, all the way through July 1914, Austria became the, the tipping point for Germany, France, Britain, and others in the European uh, area there as they were under great constraints from the Treaty of St. Of, uh, Germany in 1920 and so forth. Uh, the economy was in disarray in in uh, Austria, 
and then all of a sudden, Austria decided, uh, as we see history perhaps repeating itself, that they decided to do this bailout, and suddenly they uh, uh, took a bankruptcy, the country of Austria, and it began a toppling effect in Europe, in Germany, a run on the banks that took place, which reached across the Great Pond into the United States and began the Depression and the effects of the Depression in the United States and triggering it here in the United States as, they, as we watched Europe failing one by one. And of course, the United States economy uh, didn't make this uh, uh, bottom out until 1933. It caused us to go into the Great Depression. So what's taking place? Well, one particular economist uh, said, Jim Rickards, uh, reveals that just a few days ago, in a Shanghai, what's called the Shanghai Accords in China, uh, it's been revealed in this secret meeting that they are actually looking to kill the United States dollar and replace it with the International Monetary Fund SDRs. Check it out for yourself. I don't have time to explain it all to you. We have in previous programs. But according to this article on February the 26th, there was a meeting that was held by the federal uh, U.S. Fed chair and others, uh, the IMF, uh, the ECB, all the several others, the Secretary of the Treasury, all of these coming together to determine what can we do in the devaluing of currency to keep countries afloat before the bubble explodes. In Australia right now, the housing bubble is about to explode. We're seeing economies all over the world that are on the edge of economic collapse. What's going on this week? As I speak right now, there are meetings that are being held, and I believe in these meetings, we're going to see the outcome of a posturing to try to help sure up things around our world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a time like never before for you to be prepared, prayed up, and ready because Jesus Christ, I believe, is going to return and we don't know what we may face between now and then. It's a time when we must be a people prepared as Christians, not in fear, not dwelling in an area of fear, but dwelling in a place of complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ like never before. In a moment, I'm gonna come back and share with you what is so important for the time that we're in. And from the first century church to what is happening in this very day, within hours, even of me bringing this particular report to you on Bible, on uh, Prophecy Files from Bible Prophecy, you're going to see happening in our world right now what was taking place then and what we need to do as believers in this particular time. I'll be right back. I'm happy to make this very special offer to you today. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be giving you the opportunity to receive this very important teaching the seven prophetic churches of the book of Revelation. Captured it on DVD and CD, and I want you to be able to get it in your possession. I believe it's significant to have the understanding of what John was sharing in these letters as the revelation came through him to these seven churches in the book of Revelation for their times and for our times. The information is on the screen for you to be able to order this very special offer and for your gift of $25 or more to the Prophecy Files program, we'll be able to send back to you the seven prophetic churches teaching of the book of Revelation. I'm sure that you'll wanna get it in your possession. It will help you to have eyes wide open to see what's taking place in the church world and how that you can prepare yourself and your family for the days that are ahead. Great deception is all around us, but it is the truth that will make you free. Get this special offer today, The Seven Prophetic Churches of Revelation on DVD and CD. Order yours today. America is in dire need of a civics lesson. The old spirit of socialism is being embraced by the masses. Is socialism biblical? Is it the church's responsibility to keep the American Republic alive? Could this be a sign of the Antichrist rising? Pastor Rogers answers these questions and more in his latest CD teaching, Socialism, the Introduction to the System of the Antichrist. To order, please consult the information on your screen.
I want to welcome you back to Prophecy Files, and I hope that you will uh, DVR this particular program and share it with other people, and as well as get a hold of the special offer that we've made for you today, because I don't have time to go into the depth of each one of these seven prophetic churches. But I'm, I can assure you that what I'm about to share with you today is not only, it not only happened then, but it is happening in such vividness for us today that it's important that you have an understanding of what's happening and what you need to do as a believer. Now, last week, we began talking to you about the seven prophetic churches of the book of Revelation. These churches all had characteristics that speak to the condition of the church then, of course, and to the church right now. The warnings that John sent to each church are warnings that we should heed today because of the times that we're in. Now, I call them prophetic churches because while John was writing to them of their present condition, he was also writing to the future condition of the church at large. We can see what these churches were enduring as the hostility against Christianity and Christians were increasing. We can also see what we need to do as overcomers, as each one of these churches were uh, given the opportunity to be made overcomers in the middle of all that they were facing. Last week, we talked to you about the church at Ephesus and how they had left their first love and that they needed to remember, repent, and return back to God. But there is one church that did not receive any kind of condemnation from the Lord. In fact, there were prayers that were offered to the church at Smyrna that we're going to talk to you about in brief today that is actually the shortest letter of all the letters written to these seven prophetic churches. Jesus was keenly aware, the Bible says, as John was writing, of their works, the tribulation, and the poverty that Christians at the church of Smyrna and in the city of Smyrna were suffering. They were actively serving the Lord, suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ, and sacrificing to preach the gospel. The church was located in the seaport city of Smyrna. It was a wealthy city. It had uh, commerce in medicine and in architecture and in so and science. The worship that took place there, by and large, was uh, idol worship to the goddess Sybil, who took her place in authority in that city, uh, where her followers would cut themselves. Now listen to this. This was happening in the, church, in the city of Smyrna. They would cut themselves and dance themselves into a frenzy to worship this uh, goddess, idol goddess, Sybil. Now listen carefully to this. As we are seeing um, the laws changed in North Carolina uh, to support uh, male and female bathrooms and the push of homosexual agendas to try to get gender neutral bathrooms, in the church of Smyrna, they were dealing with the same thing. In their city, the worship of Sybil uh, was made by male uh, priests of this cult worship of Sybil that were castrated and made into third gender persons. That is, they were not made male or female, recognized male or female. This is exactly what's taking place today. Uh, the gender neutrality mindset, while they, it was happening physically then, uh, same-sex uh, changes, transgender changes today, uh, even third gender and more than that uh, identity is happening. Now, in the middle of the city of Smyrna was this church of Smyrna established, one time pastored by the very apostle of the book of Revelation, John, and now this letter that he's writing to the angel of the church there uh, that was also pastored by his understudy and who would be a martyr, Polycarp. He was persecuted and martyred for his stand for Jesus Christ. Now, in this city, there was a stadium built uh, that held some 20,000 people, and that stadium was used, much like ISIS uses stadiums today, for the execution and persecution of Christians by the thousands and tens of thousands. Now listen, Smyrna's name means crushed or persecuted. It was literally referring to the church that was suffering persecution there in the city of Smyrna. They watched their pastor, Polycarp, arrested and burned to death. Even as the flames were coming up around Polycarp, he made this statement. Lord God, Father of our blessed Savior, I thank thee that I have been deemed worthy to receive the crown of martyrdom, and that I may die for thee and thy cause. I think of those right now who within just the past few days have suffered the same execution by ISIS. In fact, this article 
ISIS burns 15 civilians alive as a crying woman went on television to beg the Western governments to save us or bomb us from, and bring to a, a quick death to us because of the suffering that we're facing. Now, I want you to notice the picture from this particular article and the cage that is purported to be there in a uh, demolished city in Samaria and some in Iraq. This cage is actually holding children as they're dressed in orange garments. Fallujah has been a location in Iraq where people have suffered uh, the blockade from, from leaving the city uh, or they pay the tax of Islam. Some are being encased in caskets by ISIS and burned till they're dead. My friends, this is the same activity that was happening at the church at Smyrna. How important that it is that we pay close attention to what is taking place today because this is without a doubt the persecution that the saints at Smyrna were suffering. They lived in the catacombs, the, the uh, tombs uh, of people just to survive from the persecution. In this letter from John, coming from the book of Revelation to the pastor at Smyrna and to the saints that were there. He told them more persecution is coming. Some in this church were pretending to be saved by mixing law and grace, and false teachers were telling them that it's okay, that everything's okay, that you don't have to worry about this. But the mixture of that gospel was deadly. In fact, John identified that this particular area was the synagogue of Satan, the seat of Satan, with this mixed message. Listen, more about this church can be heard from the teaching that I give to you on the seven prophetic churches of the book of Revelation. It's on CD and DVD, and you can get that offer. The church of Smyrna suffered through the outlawing of Christianity and great persecution. Their goal was stated to eradicate Christianity from off of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, the city of, of uh, uh, Fagira, the entire city uh, of Christians there, uh, were burned alive by their persecutors and their captives, but none of them gave up their faith. These faithful followers of Christ became more committed, and I believe that's what we're going to see in the days ahead. As the intensity of persecution continues to ramp up all around the world, I believe it's going to fan the flames of genuine Christians who will not lose their faith, and the blood of the martyrs will become the seed of the future church. My friends, today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. We're living on the edge of the coming of the Lord. And I want to encourage you now to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and get ready because I truly believe what I end the program with each week. I believe that Jesus Christ is coming very soon. Thanks for joining us today. Spread the word about Prophecy Files. Check us out online. And until the next time, remember, Jesus Christ, He is coming soon.